Hey guys, it's Bento. Um, friend of mine, um, Frank, he's uh, one of my Corvette friends. He is purchasing a chef's knife for his brother in California. And he asked me if, asked me if I could record some of the building process. And of course I'll do a photo shoot when it's all done, but I'm going to shoot a little bit on the uh, actual building. So. Yesterday I got the drawing done. He wants a eight inch, eight to nine inch. I ended up with an eight inch chef's knife um, with a hidden tang. Um, so I did the drawing. We're also going to be doing uh, an etching. Um, he's an avid outdoorsman, likes to fish, and uh, so he wanted a pompano on on the blade etch. So this is what the drawing looks like. We got the uh, typical chef style blade, and then the uh, hidden tang handle. This will be solid uh, Amboynia burl with one mosaic pin going through the uh, hidden tang and a brass bolster that's uh, integrated in with the uh, shape of the handle. And then here we've got the uh, sketch of the uh, pompano with some scrolls and wave design um, there's another one in the center there in the distance and one coming into the picture so we're going to keep about a half an inch of the bottom of the blade clear for sharpening and uh, about a little over an eighth of an inch three sixteenths I believe at the top um, but the, the design will begin where you see the lines, but I'm probably not going to actually etch in a line. I haven't decided for sure yet. So, but that is the overall design there. I've uh, got my notes over here on it. Uh, the size of the brass, this would be a half inch brass with uh, one and one eighth diameter vertically and uh, probably almost half that in width uh, and then the block of wood I'll show you that in a little bit but anyway this is where it begins There's a sketch the etching design and my measurements so I'll go out to the uh, shop and see the blade kind of work all right this is going to go um we're in the shop. What I got in here is my blank. Every time I make a new knife, I do a blank. And this is the Pompano blank. This will be the uh, pattern for the handle. And I'll be cutting a blank out for that too. That way if I ever do the knife again, I have my patterns. Everybody uses something different. Plexiglass, metal. Whatever. I have a lot of this uh, MDF, so that's what I use. This is a block of Amboynia Burl that we'll be using. It's sort of a reddish orangish color, very bright, brilliant. The uh, other side has got a different structure in it. Bird's eye or something. Top. It's got a real pretty, and this side's real pretty. I like how it changes in structure. This side is going to be more striped. It's going to be a beautiful handle. So, anyway, and then, like I said, this it'll be shaped like that. So, of course, I saved my drawings, my original drawing. Um, right now, the knife is over in the oven, going up to temp. We're going to take it up to 1450. Let me shut this door. Taking the temperature up to 1450, and then it's going to soak for about five minutes in the old oven here. Um, then we're going to do a differential quench in this uh, pan of oil so that the uh, cutting edge will be hardened and the uh, spine will be a little softer uh, and if we polish enough we might get a little bit of a hormone on there.
showing the difference. The last knife I did like that, I, I did get a little homolin that showed up, even at 600 grit paper. And I think put a little lemon juice or something like that on it, polish it out. Um, I think it'll give you the same. I had to cut the heat down. This thing's sitting on a uh, heater to bring the oil up to 150 degrees. And I was in there babbling with the, the girls of the house and I let it get a little too hot. So it's a little over 200. I went ahead and shut it off. I wanted it to come down to 150. So I'm going to open the door up, let it cool off some more. And, uh, but uh, yeah, this is the shop. The shop's grown a lot since I did videos of it before. Grown a lot as far as having more stuff. Um, I have all my original tools. Got all my belts that I hang up over here. Got my 1x30, my grinder, uh, little homemade uh, grinder right there. I use that mainly to clean off my blades at the after they've been heat treated and then a buffer and then uh, this is my old flat sander still use it still works I did buy that new Japanese one and I prefer this one over that Japanese one any day this is a wood tech see the name there on the side and it's been a good one. My dad used it probably for years, and now I've got it. I've had it for, I guess, three years. And she's still running hard. Um, and I'm going to buy another one of those. Then here's my KMG. Still doing good. KMG's great, great knife grinder. This is the two horsepower, variable speed. To 215 or 220 volt, and then this is my workspace over here. My little uh, vise for sanding blades or um, handles, mostly handles. My blades I do on this stick right here. Um, it actually turns, and I just tighten it up, and then I can put different size blades on here, and then just clamp it around the ricasso. It works pretty good, you know, it's not a, a great knife clamp like the fancy ones you see, but it works and I can actually take the, the wing nut off the top of it here and take it off so it's not in the way. Eventually I'll, I'll be able to buy a, a nice clamp. Um, this is one of my sanding blocks, grinding blocks, all my glues, hand tools. All my grinding blocks up there. Um, magnetic tool holder there, and I got one. I just hung out the other day there for for all my files and stuff, extra stuff. More files up there. Um, my drawing table. Originally, you know, I set this up to do drawing on, but I. I end up doing more designing in the house just because uh, I don't feel cramped in there. And, um, but, you know, you never know. You know, it's, I still have it. It, it. it swings up, if some of you guys remember. This whole board here swings up and it locks in with that little pin right there. And then you got a flat working counter underneath of it. Um, all my sandpapers in there, tape. Like I said I do the most of my knife work in this little spot right here, putting it together and stuff. Um, got a spare drill right there, small drill press. I use it more for cleaning up the edges of my knives than I do drilling. Uh, one day I'll have a another full-size drill press as a second one and a second backup or whatever it just takes a while to accumulate all your tools here's where I do my finished sharpening I do most of my sharpening over there on the 1x30 green 1x30 there and 
and then I finish up with ceramic rods and uh, the uh, strop, leather strop. And then here's uh, my air grinder. Sometimes I use that for different reasons, different bits and stuff for the air grinder. Uh, over there I got my uh, bandsaw. It's a Craftsman and um, various screws and gadgets and, and that little thing there on the wall. Uh, I finally got one of these. Uh, it's kind of like a jeweler's saw. But this one's more of a um, coping saw, I guess what you call it. I need a, I need a, a one a little bit smaller with like a diamond uh, type blade on it, a jeweler's type. This will work for cutting out slots and finger guards. Um, but I think I'd like a, a jeweler's size with the, the round uh, diamond coated rods on there. Let's see. Files, you know, I'm starting to get a pretty good collection. I have a lot of these small ones. I use the small a lot when I'm doing my guards and stuff. And then my bigger stuff for flattening out the shoulders. I use that. Just, uh, entertainment for the shop and my clock that has a dead battery all of my patterns on the wall uh, air condition mask uh, everybody should use a mask uh, buff, buffing wheels I use this uh, hand, hand, uh, homemade grinder buffer uh, for buffing also uh, works pretty good. But the main main part I, I use this to clean up the carbon on the uh, heat treated blades. There we go. Now you can see the curtains. What a great curtain, right? For a knife shop. American made. USA. Pinto. Alright. And the heat treating oven over there. I have a cooling rack just below the heat treating oven, right? There, that rack right there. I use that to cool uh, stainless steel sometimes. And there's Dusty's little water water bowl. My uh, steel cutting bandsaw right there. And a bunch of tools and stuff up there. Extra blades. That's a clamp I made for doing hidden tang knives. Yeah, that's, that's the shop these days. You can see it's uh, packed in here. I need a shop twice this size now. Oh, there's all my belts for the 1x30. And then more stuff over here. There's a shelf with all my stuff on it. I've got different woods down there. Oh, I've got uh, lots of antler and bone. This is like a third of what I have. I have a, some large pieces of elk and deer antler in the house. They're just, they're just too big and bulky to keep them out here.
lights cooled down. This is what it looks like after heat treatment. And it's got my primary grind on there, which has to be finished. This grind will go all the way up to the top. It'll be a full flat grind for the chef's knife. But uh, you have to leave a little bit of thickness in the, in the uh, edge so that you don't get any warping. And we're very straight. No warping. It was a good heat treat. So we'll go clean it up and uh, see how it looks. All right, this is uh, after I get it cleaned up on both sides. Got most of the carbon scale off of it. So from here, I have to put it in the oven for one hour at 400 degrees, and then repeat the process. And um, then we can call the blade tempered and start the final grind on it. Okay, the oven um, is still too hot. We're still at 575 degrees. So, we're gonna let it cool off in there. That's a 17 inch even heat oven. Um, take 17 inch blade. And maybe a hair over if you go corner to corner. But, uh, in there. So we'll go ahead and let that cool off and do our tempering here shortly. All right, we're in a different shop. I'm going to go ahead and put it in uh, one of my toaster ovens. But uh, this is my shop in my garage, my man cave. I don't see you've seen it, but that's my leather Kydex desk. And my lathe. And over here, I've got my back up tempering of it. So we're gonna put the blade in here. Dust it in there on the rack. Let's see. A little more centered. And we're going to put the timer on for 60 minutes. oven for one hour, let it cool down to room temperature, and again for 400 at one hour. So two cycles, and we'll be ready to do the final grind. All right, blade's been in there for almost a half an hour, and you can see by the scale there, it's right at 400 degrees. It's exactly where I want it. And when it comes out of the oven, it should be an like an amber straw color. Um, so yeah, this is for a gentleman in uh, Jacksonville, Florida named Jim. And it's his chef's knife. And uh, doing this video mainly for him to watch how his knife is built. So this is Pinto and this will be the end of part one. Part two will pick up after the blades tempered and we're ready to do the final grind on it.